deeply respected judges and my colleagues. Uh, I'm Dr. Nidhi Rai, radiology resident of VMMC and Sathajan Hospital. And I'll be presenting before you my paper titled Arterial Spin Labeled MRI for Evaluating Perfusion of Brain Tumors. I've done this under the guidance of Dr. Rupi Jamwal, who is the Associate Professor and Consultant at the Department of Radio Diagnosis, Sathajan Hospital. There, was, um, there were no conflicts of interest and nothing to disclose. The aim of my paper, uh, study was to determine the vascularity of brain tumors by evaluating tumor blood flow using arterial spin labeling perfusion imaging. CNS tumors are an important cause of mortality and morbidity. Uh, timely diagnosis and treatment is therefore a necessity in case of brain tumors. Conventional MRI combined with perfusion MRI imaging provides useful information for diagnosis and treatment of brain tumors. Now, the perfusion refers to the delivery of blood at the level of capillaries, and it is measured in units of ml per 100 grams per minute. Perfusion parameters give direct insight about the tumor vascularization and proliferation, which is essential in evaluation of brain tumors, where more aggressive lesions typically display greater vascularity. Traditional imaging in MR requires bolus injection of contrast material through large bold intravenous cannulas for the evaluation of blood flow to the brain tumors. This is an invasive method, hence has a limited use. Arterial spin labeling perfusion imaging is an evolving magnetic resonance uh, imaging technique that measures cerebral blood flow without the use of an intravascular contrast agent. This technique provides a non-invasive way to evaluate cerebral blood flow by magnetically labeling the arterial blood protons before it flows into the area of interest. In this technique, two images are required, a control image and a labeled image. A control image is an image in which the blood water magnetization has not been inverted and labeled image is an image in which there is inversion of the blood water magnetization. The signal difference between these two images is calculated, which is directly proportional to the amount of magnetization inversion delivered to the area of interest. Arterial spin labeling offers the most significant advantage over traditional contrast perfusion techniques as it does not require a gadolinium-based tracer, that is, it, it is non-invasive, hence favorable for patients with renal dysfunction, for pediatric population, and for those required repeated follow-up scans. Methodology. Uh, the study, uh, my study was conducted, a study was conducted in the Department of Radio Diagnosis in collaboration with Department of Neurosurgery and Department of Pathology, VMMC and Safdajang Hospital. It was an observational cross-sectional study and it was conducted over a period of 18 months. For sample size calculation, formula for correlation analysis was used and sample size turned out to be 33 uh, by calculation. However, we included a total of 46 patients participants of suspected brain tumors uh, and that were based on uh, that was based on clinical history and previous imaging investigations out of which 35 participants turned out to be brain tumor patients that satisfied our inclusion criteria which we'll discuss later mri acquisition was carried out in a single session on three tesla mr imaging machine with a 32 channel phased array head neck spine coil all cases of brain tumors referred from the Department of Neurosurgery uh, in our hospital, that is Safdarjung Hospital, were included in our study. Exclusion criteria included patients with one or other contraindications for MRI, like the patients with metallic clips, pacemakers, or patients having claustrophobia. Patients with any patients with known malignancy other than brain tumor, uh, with secondary metastasis in the brain, and patients of brain tumor with previous surgical interventions. Written informed consent was taken from each patient that uh, fulfilled the inclusion criteria and clinical history was noted from each patient and findings were recorded in uh, pre-designed performa. Patients underwent pseudo-continuous arterial spin labeling perfusion imaging on three Tesla MRI machine. MRI sequences, uh, ASL perfusion imaging study was performed with whole brain extending from vertex to the base of skull. Images were obtained using background suppressed 3D stack spiral FAC sequence. After performing conventional MRI sequences, that is T1, T2, and flare, 3D ASL was performed by use of pseudo-continuous labeling period of 1500 milliseconds with post-labeling delay time ranging from 1525 milliseconds to 2000 milliseconds, depending on the age of the patient. The labeling plane was selected at the level of Pons medulla junction to avoid the curvature of Petrus part of ICA and to select the end portion of ascending ICA. 
Slice thickness was taken as 4 mm with no interslice gap. The tumor in its greatest dimension was made, made to coincide with the imaging plane by referring to conventional MRI sequences that is T1, T2 and flare. Post-processing, uh, post the ASL colored maps were acquired and uh, ROIs were placed in axial plane in the region with maximum perfusion. Non-overlapping regions of ROIs of size more than or equal to 5 mm of equal size were visually placed on all the tumors on the axial ASL. And then their absolute and relative values of maximum and mean tumor blood flow was measured within the tumor. Relative TBF values were measured by taking the ratio between TBF and the CBF values, that is tumor blood flow and the cerebral blood flow values. Then these patients were followed up and tumor tissue biopsy sample of operated patients was sent to the Department of Pathology for histopathological analysis. Uh, their microvascularity of the brain tumors were evaluated. The tissue sections were immunostained using a monoclonal mouse antibody directed against the CD34 antigen, which identifies vascular endothelial cells. Microvessels within the tumors were counted in three hotspots at both 10x and 40x magnification, and the mean of the three values of the vessel count was considered to be the microvessel density. Results, uh, total, uh, as we said before, we included a, uh, 46 participants and out of which 35 turned out to be patients of brain tumors that uh, satisfied our inclusion criteria and that could be considered a part of study. Out of these 35 patients, the there were 19 cases of gliomas, including pilocytic astrocytomas, pleomorphic uh, xanthastrocytoma, oligodendroglioma, diffuse astrocytoma, anaplastic astrocytoma, glioblastoma and giant cell glioblastoma. Uh, 19 were gliomas, 11 were meningiomas, 2 schwannomas, 2 craniopharyngiomas and 1 was hemangioblastoma. In our study, most of the patients presented with complaints of headache, weakness of one side of the body, seizures and blurring of vision in some cases. Uh, correlation was uh, uh, correlation between the mean tumor blood flow and the vessel count at 10x and 40x magnification uh, was calculated uh, using Spearman correlation coefficient and uh, both of which came out to be positively correlated with p-value of less than 0 0.001. Then correlation between maximum tumor blood flow and the vessel count at both 10x and 40x magnification also came out to be positively correlated with p-value of less than 0 0.001. Now, there was a strong positive correlation between vessel count and mean TBF, TBF at vessel count uh, seen at 10x magnification and mean TBF and this correlation was statistically significant like we saw in the graph. And also there was a moderate positive correlation between vessel count at 40x magnification and mean TBF. A very, pos very strong positive correlation between max TBF and vessel count at 10x magnification was seen and this correlation was statistically significant. A strong positive correlation between maximum TBF and vessel count at 40x magnification was seen and this correlation was also statistically significant. These are my a few of the representative cases. In the first figure, uh, first figure was that of a patient uh, of a patient which was uh, diagnosed with uh, uh, hemangioblastoma which it showed a cystic lesion with solid component seen at left cp angle and it showed a very high vascularity uh, asl on asl color map uh, it showed the mean tbf value of 400 2 uh, milliliters per minute per 100 grams and maximum TBF value of 578.3 milliliters per minute per 100 grams with relative TBF mean of 14.9 and uh, relative TBF max of 38.7. It showed the hemangioblastoma uh, showed a very high vascularity, also high in comparison to the uh, meningiomas or uh, other high-grade gliomas. 
and figure figure two was a case of meningioma seen in the left temporal left frontal region and it showed uh, on SL color map mean TBF was um, 368 uh, milliliters per minute per 100 grams max TBF was 386 milliliters per minute per 100 grams RTBF mean was 6.5 and RTBF max was 52.9 The third case was a case of meningioma arising from atria of the left lateral ventricle. The in, on ASL color map, uh, mean TBF was found out to be 127 uh, milliliters per minute per 100 grams. Max TBF was 143 milliliters per minute per 100 grams. And RTBF mean was 4 and RTBF max was 35. The figure 4 shows was a case of atypical meningioma. Uh, seen in the right posterior fossa region, it showed a low vascularity compared to the other meningiomas. Its, it, uh, its mean TBF was calculated to be 11.6 milliliters per minute per 100 gram, which is very less compared to the other meningiomas. And max TBF was calculated to be 15 ml per minute per 100 grams. RTBF mean was 0.4 and RTBF max was 37.5. On CD34 IHC staining, uh, we got sim the pictures similar to given in this slide. Figure one shows uh, CD34 stain slide with high microvessel proliferation. We can see the stained vessel, bra brown colored stained vessel walls in the first figure. And figure two shows a low microvessel proliferation. Discussion. Uh, the mean age of mean TBF obtained from our study, mean range was found out to be 133 plus minus 91.6. Max TBF was 160 plus minus 116. RTBF mean was 4 plus minus 2.8 and RTBF max was 39 plus minus 10.4. We used Spearman correlation that is a non-parametric test to study correlation between TBF and microvessel density in brain tumors. And the correlation between mean TBF and microvascular density at both 10x and 40x and uh, maximum TBF and microvascular density at, again, both 10x and 40x was found to be statistically significant. A strong positive correlation was seen between mean TBF and microvascular density at 10x magnification, moderate positive correlation between mean TBF and microvascular density at 40x magnification, a very strong positive correlation between max TBF and MVD at 10x magnification and a strong positive correlation was seen between max TBF and MVD at 40x magnification. These findings were found to be in agreement with few studies which were conducted by T. Noguchi et al., Koizumi S. et al., Kikuchi et al., and Kimura H. et al., which also show a positive correlation between mean TBF and max TBF with MVD which is also known as the percentage vessel count. In our study, we also measured relative TBF values, which were normalized to the CBF values, that is the cerebral blood flow values. The mean range of the values of mean CBF was uh, 33 plus minus 9, and maximum CBF was 40 plus minus 11.2. CBF values were taken by placing ROI at cortical gray matter. For this, t images were used. Gray matter was taken as reference in concordance with few studies, like those of Weber, M.A. et al., and uh, Jutukonda, MR et al., which have mentioned that ASL underestimates white matter perfusion, thus favoring gray matter as the reference. Correlation between RTBF mean and vessel count at 10x and 40x and RTBF max and vessel count at 10x and uh, 40x, which was also found to be statistically significant in our study, showing a positive correlation between RTBF mean and vessel count at 10x and 40x. Moderate positive correlation was seen between RTBF max and vessel count at 10x and 40x. These were my references. Thank you. Thank you so much.